Special shirts are my Speaking huge Speaking of special shirts, welcome back everyone. Hey guys, Casino we're back. Guitars. Sorry, I cut you off. Say that again. Casino Guitars. Hey, hey it's me and me, James and Baxter. <laughs> That's cool. What's, um, what's popping? How you been? I'm good. So we're going to talk alert. about... You're alert. Alert. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, not, it's not that early. We're at a party. Unless you're in Singapore. Yeah. Hi, Sasha. Hey, bud. Um, so we're going to talk about... <laughs> He's going to be so happy. <laughs> or or mad. <laughs> He's it's like, why aren't they answering my call? But we're it's, making videos, Sasha. We're yeah. busy. We're busy doxing you on the internet. Um, um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> it's okay. So we're talking about the worst... Things by Fender. Fender's flop, baby. You gotta say the thing, the title. You okay. Gotta say the thing. Do it again. It's what? We already did it. Don't Do worry it again. About it. Fender's flops. I just wanna make sure I'm in it. Thanks for watching again. So we're gonna talk about some of the um, what we might call missteps from Fender and some of the goof ups, and some that I have personal loves for. Yeah, not necessarily everything on this list is like objectively bad. It just didn't sell well. And some of it is objectively some of them very did, bad. Some of them did actually sell yeah. well, but they're kind of horrible yeah. in a historical context. Sure, certainly. In, Even in things that are near and dear to my heart. Yeah. Number one, the Fender Swinger. <laughs> so, chance, so this guitar came out in the year of 1969, and, nice. it, and, and it, was, it was built by one of their master builders, Simone, who had been at Fender for quite a while, but after... Fender sold to CBS since you know in the in the glorious year of 1964 mm, or five. Yeah, uh, I, I want to see how all the people on the internet start typing as I paused it. <laughs> These 60, idiots! They don't even know. We know. We, we love do. Fender. I have Fender like, tattoos. It's a it's an unfortunate mistake. All over his body. It's an unfortunate neck mistake. Neck down. It's really bad. It's like a yakuza of uh -huh. Fender. <laughs> but anyway, the Swinger. Um, this was originally called the Music Lander. And it was built by Simone after they were they were trying to create a surplus of profits, as all businesses try to do, obviously. But the CBS executives didn't really care as much about guitar making, so they were like, hey, we got these extra parts from some terrible guitars that we made before. Let's route them and cut them and put them all together. And they did. And if you happen to have one of these things, you're very lucky in a strange way because they only made 250 of them in the entire production run ever. Limited. It's, very, it's a very limited run. Um, but it was a limited run because nobody wanted them. Yeah, and and there, it was kind of a flop. They don't sound really good. They play kind of average mm -hmm. adequately. Um, I have actually seen one before. It's really funny. It doesn't look like a real Fender. Sweet. Um, these, I've never seen one, so I'm going to look it up later. Yeah, look it up on this video. Yeah, I'll just watch this, vi this video. This video, and, you, and you'll <laughs> see it. James, why don't you lead us into number two? It's one of everybody's favorite things of all time. It's got little sweet red knobs on it. It's the evil twin, baby. Woo it's gross. Tell, tell us about the Evil Twin, Bax. You actually have one, right? I, I did have you're, one. You're one of the Evil Twin's famous players. I am, I am an Evil Twin. <laughs> if you know anything about Baxter and you research Baxter and his, like, his five seconds of almost fame and this band called The Blondes Inc., the Evil Twin was my amp. This is part of the secret tone sauce. Tone, I came, baby. I kept it secret for years. I played a 78 Les Paul Deluxe in an Evil Twin and a year 2000 American Standard Tele. All highly sought after gear. <laughs> it's an, if In certain circles, like this is... People in the know so the know evil, that this is the way to go. The Evil Twin came out in 89, and it's it was sort of Fender's answer, because like Fender's known for their single coil, their thwacky, their awesome open tones, but this was a year of hair metal, and like and grunge was on the forefront, Sweet Child of Mine had just come out. They needed something to compete with that, so they wanted something that had the Fender sound, which it really doesn't, and some more push. Um, so what year, is, what year did it come out? 89, 89 and then, yeah. but they made it for a few years. This was, right. it, was it was somewhat of a popular. Yeah, it sold okay. You can still get them. I mean, like you can for get a good it price. for cheap. Someone yeah. stole one from me, my original one. That was so. If you have it, congratulations. It was okay, right, wow. but when you did steal it, it was right next to a really rare Vox that was worth about six thousand dollars. So you stole the six hundred dollar. Congratulations. Good job. Um, but anyway. Yeah, it was, it was That's a, funny. It was, it was a funny day. It was yeah. literally right next to it. But this one has red knobs. <laughs> this is cool. And this was not that long ago. This was like ten years ago. Yeah. But um, it, it has a, it has it has two channels. It has a hundred watt. You can and you can juice it all the way down. I believe twenty five watts. Uh, it's loud. So this it, is like directly in competition with like like the like solid state like dual super leads and stuff like kinda, that. But it was like that like really gainy kind of. But it's not really gainy. It's not. It's yeah. Fender steel, so it's like it's it's a weird gain. It sort of lives in between that gain land and not gain land. It just sounds kind of like rah rah. Mm -hmm. um, but I liked it with a Les Paul. It's kind of a neat sound. And it can give you these like um, unique sounds. You play in the out of phase position with a different guitar. Kind of sounds good. It has the reverb switchable, so you can have it on channel one, channel two, or both. I always have it on both because who doesn't want more yeah, reverb? 
I didn't use pedals Reaver, maybe. Um, but it, this this thing was so heavy, so cumbersome, so ugly that I mean, you, a hand cart would not even move Jeez. it. Sometimes it was it was a beast. It's too much. And it didn't sound like a Fender. So yeah. the evil twin. I see. Go get one. I you love can get them. them. They're great. They're cheap um, on the internet. Number three. Moving on. Um, so this is one that's near and dear to our hearts. Um, we first saw these in 2018, beginning of 2018. Yeah. Nam 2018. Nam show 2018. Um, I was instantly in love. And, As um, were all of us at the Casino Guitars World. We actually have one here um, to show off. Dun dun dun! The Parallel Universe Jazz Telly. Now, James, you were informing me um, last night when we were talking about this uh, video. This, this is one of their worst selling guitars ever. It's just, nobody wants it. And I kind of get it. Um, even though, like, I still really like it. Like, it just looks so cool. It, yeah, but there's a but. but it, yeah, there is a but. It's... It doesn't... It's, what does it's, it do? Not a lot. It's what's weird. It's like it's a jazz master. <laughs> it's a jazz, yeah, jazz master neck and pickups, and electronics, with a Telecaster body, which. So you kind of get the sound of a jazz master without the cool of a jazz master. Yeah. Because that's part of what a jazz master. Why we get them? They look right. cool as hell. Now, and I'm not sure if they. Yeah, the circuits are totally different. Yeah, the circuits are different. But I should have looked this up. Um, leave it in the comments if you know off the top of your head. Um, if the wood is the same on the Telecaster body as it would be on a Jazzmaster, because a Jazzmaster typically has like uh, base wood, whereas your Tele is going to have all their ash, um, which would make a pretty significant difference. Um, well, and, the, and then the neck was a little... It's just dis weird. It's a strange... It's I, a strange I understand why they didn't sell We, we well. love these when we saw them. We, we had a few come in the shop. We have a couple left if you're Yeah, interested. if you want it! <laughs> <laughs> we'll cut uh, you a really good deal on it, guys. On so yeah, that's that's number three. I okay, put it away. It's a bummer. But it's um, it's cool. -ish. Bye, my love. Okay, bye. Okay, one of my personal favorites. So Fender, in the in the glorious years, this guitar came out. This is their second guitar to come out that was for a female artist. The second signature female artist guitar. The first is a Bonnie Raitt. Which is, awesome. she's a phenomenal guitar player, Bonnie great Raitt. singer songwriter, gorgeous to this day. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, I've already told my wife, if she Bonnie Raitt, it's like, I will leave you for Bonnie mm -hmm. Raitt. There's a couple people, that, mm -hmm. and Bonnie won't talk to me though. No. It was this she's thing that cool, it happened man. in 94. I can't oh. talk about it. Um, that's not true, but I wanted to create some stories. Some rumors. Anyway, the Venus, Courtney Love, signature series Venus. This was part Hell of the yeah. Vista series. It's, um, this is a hodgepodge of disaster. A veritable tone machine. Um, it, was, it was released in 97, discontinued shortly after in 98. Um, this guitar, well, I mean, you don't really go to hole for a tone. Yeah, I mean, no, like, you don't. They, they, those, all those, it's, it's the, it was made poorly. It was not launched properly. Nobody really wanted this. Yeah. And it, it came, it doesn't sound good. It's kind of neat looking in an ugly way. Cool. I mean, again, watch the video, yeah. <laughs> you'll see it. I haven't seen that. But um, Courtney Love, we're sorry. We think you're great in certain ways. I loved Basquiat, it's one of my favorite movies. And um, yeah, but the Venus. Yeah, no. I love Courtney Love. I think she's, she's awesome. I just think she's cool. She, I mean, she is cool. I think it'd be fun to hang out with her. It'd be amazing to hang right? out with her. Just like party with Courtney you Love. You might not make it to the no, next day. No, which is, that's the amazing. point, yeah. So if you have a Courtney Love Venus, don't get rid of it. It's a really rare, yeah. it sort of makes it in that sort of that, that plop, <laughs> plop's a plop. weird word. The plop of these weird like <laughs> guitars that come out in history. And that, it's something I've noticed, except for this last one that we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Every one of these come at the end of a decade, it seems. Yeah. This one's, yeah. This one's introducing a new decade. Right. So number five, our final one on the list, James. The Telecoustic. Everybody, everybody remembers the Telecoustic. Yes. We've all seen it hung up in, the, in our local pawn shop. <laughs> for $120. $120. It's a flat top with like a plastic back. Um, it's just not good. It's just bad all it's, around. It's a terrible sounding acoustic guitar. Yeah, it's and, not a good electric guitar. And then what was funny is like, so last year was also the year of the Acoustasonic, which came out, which is- uh, End of the decade. Right, which is an amazing guitar. Yeah, it's which awesome. Is, which has been one of Fender's top sellers and a lot, a lot of other companies are jealous, like that's keeping Fender afloat. I'm like, well, that and all the other millions and of like, dollars of guitars they the sell. Strat, like, the Strat, like maybe dollar. like the Stratocaster. That like. might keep them afloat. <laughs> but this came out in the early 2000s. They kept it out for a few years. It's, it plays somewhat horribly. It sounds worse. 
Um, it's there's really no functionality. To no, this it's guitar. just bad. It's just a it's a true flop. If if you bike it, it bad. sounds bad. If you can plug it in, it sounds even no redeeming factors. It's um nothing. It's 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 a tricky instrument. And then when the acoustic sonic came out, a lot of people were like, oh, they're doing it again because no. the name's confusing. It's very similar. Fender does these little weird names. I mean, and it really does the the acoustic it sonic. Strange. It just looks like a souped up teleacoustic with the curved edges. Right. It looks like they did it, but good. And I'll give thumbs up to that one because I was a definite doubter on that one when it came me out. Too. Fender, like I, they flew me out to see it, and I was like, nope. And I was like, I played. I was like, yep. Yeah. Darn it. They're actually um, good. So there's your guitars. If you have any comments, questions. Concerns, um, thoughts. Put them, put them down there, or I subsequently won't read them. I, I'll read uh, them. That's not true. I do read them. I, I do reply in the comments sometimes, and yeah, I, yeah. I think you people, reply as yourself. So yeah, well, I, I, that's the only thing I can do. Okay. But like, I I think that people don't realize it's it's like me in the video. So if you see somebody with my name replying to your comp, it's me. So your name is you. Yeah, okay. it's me. I'm I'm James. If it's Casino Guitars replying, it's probably, it's probably me. Back. It might be Derek. Hopefully, it's not Sean. Um, yeah. Because he'll talk about Radiohead or something. So. Yeah, because he's dumb. He's not dumb. He's dumb, Sean. He's gorgeous. <laughs> he's attractive, yeah. Help um, me, Derek. But anyway, I, thanks for watching again. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. <laughs> See you later, bud. That was good. We had a handshake. Thanks. Bye, universe.